Welcome to episode number 35 of the Let's Discuss Gaming podcast. We should call this Murphy's Law podcast. <laughs> uh, um, I'm Triple J. Joining me is my co-host, Dr. Games 101 Hello, people. Look at my Game Stonks hat, boys. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> yes, I know he's weird. <laughs> um, um, anyway, um, so we got a bunch of stories to talk about um, in the gaming industry that's happened over the last couple of weeks. We're going to talk about them. The very first one um, is about Halo Infinite, because I know you're a big fan of Halo. Mm-hmm. Ever since um, the inception, especially by Halo 3 was the biggest one uh, of my time when I get it on my own accord, so... Well, I I think if I think Halo One and uh, or uh, I think Halo One was bigger when it first came out. Well, for me, it's the biggest is bigger than Halo One in my perspective because that's what I have. Well, you didn't grow up with an ex- you didn't grow up with an original Xbox either. No, just the three sixty after I turned twenty. So yeah. So, um, but anyway, um, a couple a little bit of information I got from Yang Yeah's video and then. Uh, we'll be going over this article as we will with most um, first uh, there are colors there are outfits that you can get uh, certain color swaps the good news is if you want these certain colors you just have to level grind you don't have to pay to get them which is a good thing but um, the second basic colors you have to buy like you can get these weird colors by level grinding, but like normal colors that people would choose, red, blue, orange, you have to pay for those. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you think of this about, I mean, I is, 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 uh, is outfit customization a big thing in Halo Infinite? Not to my awareness for us older gamers, but for the younger gamers, they'll eat up like it's, like it's hotcakes so or like candy at best. And, uh, you know, Halo Infinite, it basically brings the old and the new players together, and that's what they did. So I talked to, I actually interacted with kids online, I interacted with adults online, and after we're seeing all these cosmetics and the battle pass system and all, I think it's anticlimactic, because you thought that you're going to earn this stuff, right, not right this second, of course, because it's, it's, it's still considered to be the, the beta, so I told when the full release of of December eighth release comes out of the full game, we'll see if they're gonna change it or not. Just give it. Let's pray to to, to the heavens Almighty, you know, because if they see it and hear all uh, our complaints via our voice chats and uh, you know recordings online that we do with YouTube and everything else, they'll they'll probably change up a little bit. But that's ridiculous to spend like two dollars or one dollar on on a color, the green, red. I mean, gold is one thing. You spend. Two, three dollars on the gold. I can understand that feeling, or some uh, rare color we never saw in, in decades, or whatever. Like I don't know, uh, what's that called? A special brown, or a special black, or a special gray, or both, or some other. Mixes those three colors together. Where it may sound very look look weird, but that type of stuff. That's why I'm thinking of. Yeah, so I I can understand that, but like I'm when you have to pay for basic colors, it it, it it's. I'm I'm getting I'm getting dead or alive six vibes, you know. How you had to pay the, for the individual hair color of of every individual character, and it's like, well, twelve characters multiplied by, um, you know, however many possibilities for hair color at a dollar each, you know it. It, you know, it just, it wasn't a good th- it wasn't a good look for Dead or it made Dead or Alive look like money grubbers, mm-hmm. and I think and I think uh, this is doing it for Halo Infinite. Mm. I mean, it's I mean it's like I said, it's cosmetic, but at the same time, you know, some some young gamers they're just gonna they're just gonna buy the color because they think oh it's such a small price, mm. you know. Yeah. You know, uh, whoever's credit card is saved on my system won't mind, and then they'll do it multiple times. Definitely. Now, I would say though that there's some good uh, battle skins or those uh, armor effects or even armor altogether. Last week or two during the Thanksgiving week, they had a special event going on where it's like if you keep earning EXP or some sort of like if you keep like earning some sort of uh, battle pass. Uh, 
uh, units they called, uh, like the special tokens or units to buy at the store or whatever, you get this uh, samurai looking outfit on for like about, I don't know, about two or three, four dollars, I think it was, if I recall correctly. I don't know the full price, but it was somewhere around there that matter. But if you earn it, which I don't know how you're going to do that, but it just, during the beta, that is, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know what, what, what FIFA 2 is trying to do, and Microsoft especially, but they should know that, like, you know, it's the COVID-19, we're still in, people are still losing homes, they're, they're still, they're not in, a, in the midst of grand uh, income. We haven't had a stimulus check in over, what, seven, eight months at least. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard times right now, though, for this matter. As far as COVID goes, I think uh, pe if people really want to get back to normal, they should just open. You know, uh, you can't do anything when the when the authority, your gut, like your elected officials, say we're shutting down. But um, but if uh, you know, some I think if people really wanted to get back to normal, they just should say you know, they they should have done. They should do now what we should have done back then was say, hey, the highly susceptible, the elderly, maybe even the very young. Keep them away from anyone that could possibly have this, and other people, other healthy people. If you don't feel sick, go to work. If you do feel sick for any reason, stay home. Oh yeah, it's like a you know, don't much. don't don't try to work through it. Don't you know? Don't try to work through it. Just just stay home, um, and stay away from everyone else, like like you would normally do if you had the flu. For crying out loud. If you had the if you had the normal uh, annual flu, you wouldn't go see your grandma on that day. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I wouldn't see my grandma, but then again, one grandma I don't I'm not talking to. The other grandma doesn't even know me. So I understand. <laughs> but anyway, um, but if you but if you have like a five percent, ten percent bonus from during Christmas and. It's December 24th, 25th, and you got your bonus from your job, and you know, and you are a 18 to 35 year old. Go right ahead and spend like crazy on your your bonus for the battle pass. Because when I was 20, I might I might be doing the same thing, most likely, most likely. Yeah. But that was back during the because I was I was so amped up for Halo 3 because I was into if I wanted the DLC, I wanted to get the skins. I couldn't get the skins, obviously, because it was, I, let's just face it, it, it adds up after a while. But the DLC of the map pack 1, 2, and 3, Mythic, Mythic 2, um, other map, map pack, stuff like that. So it's like, I was I was playing ahead for doing all these things with, the, with that one game alone. That's how that's how dedicated and loyal I was to this game, or at least with the series altogether. So. Okay, we also got some more news. I got an article for this. Players with Game Pass, with an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription, get double XP boost and exclusive rewards. Um, e, um, the promotion will come out as a running monthly package, providing what we uh, said before, um, XP boost, um, double XP boost, challenge swaps, and the past tense MA4, MA40 AR um, coding um, to those who apply. The first pack will be landing on December 8th, and they plan to support this at least for the uh, close future. Um, you, have, uh, you have to check the perks gallery on your Xbox uh, to receive these gifts, um, but uh, this is... Uh, main, the main progression system of the game comes in the form of a challenge-based battle pass. Players have concerns that if you're paying, if you pay for this battle pass to get double XP boost and stuff like that, it, it becomes a pay-to-win game, basically. Mm. And it screws over the people who choose or have to level grind. Right. Um... 343 Industries has said uh, it uh, made several changes to to address these issues, and it'll continue to monitor the situation. Um, so yeah, so basically, um, people are upset because when they 
first got interested in Halo Infinite, they were like, don't worry, this is not going to be, you know, what we introduce, it's not going to be pay to win, you can still get everything level blinding, but people are feeling, well, if you can X, if you can get more XP by paying, it becomes pay to win. And I, and, um, what do you think about that? Because, like I said, you would probably be affected more than I am since you're the bigger Halo uh, fan. Yes, uh, pretty much. I'm, I play at least three hours a day of Halo, whether it's Halo Master Chief or Halo Infinite, especially. Um, now, this is still the beta, technically speaking, until December 8th on the full game, so I give them a pass on that for the time being. But hopefully by December 8th, they'll sort it all out with, uh, this, this, these deals and going on. I mean, I I don't have the money to keep doing that. But in today's world, if I was working a full time job, benefits, you name it, everything I had back then, you know, I would might spend like five dollars a week or on cosmetics or some something of that sort. But now it's like you know, with COVID nineteen and all, I I I don't know. And I I really, I really was anticipating the fact that it'll be earned. That's what they saw said to in the live stream back in the summer of 2021. But now it's like, now it's like, like wow, they, these guys either lied to us or they're trying to put it into a special Christmas gift for December 8th or at least by the, the week of the, of the December 25th Christmas Day week, holiday. So hopefully by no later than the third week of December, which is the, the week of, of Christmas Day, we'll get something interestingly, like a... Like a a, a oomph for a release in order to get the these on our own grinding. And I don't mind grinding for certain things, but it has to be fun at the same time. So if they can balance that between grinding and the gameplay and all other aspect of sorts, and maybe you can earn it through campaign even, that'll be even great. If they get like, you know, skins for your campaign player or something like that, like they did back during Reach. And you didn't have to pay anything with that back in reach for some strange reason. I'm like, why 10 years ago it was okay to give us a helmet pre-order for GameStop and Best Buy had some other armor, that's fine. Okay, no big deal. And after that it's free because everything you get to earn through the, through the ranking system, the skills that you do, performance all together. So, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. So yeah, so um, it's apparently I just I we just wish the developers would keep their word when they made a promise to us. Mm-hmm. You know, as gamers in general, um, but apparent but the way things look the now, it just looks like, you know, a cash grab. It just looks like they're going back on what they said in terms of the dollar. And yes, I know money's important because it's a business after all. But at the same time, you don't you don't promise your customers one thing, and then and then do something completely different. I give unless them, you won't lose your customers. If I can say this, I I give them until after day after Christmas. By day after Christmas, between day after Christmas and New Year's, the way to New Year's actually, if they're not going to give us certain uh, rewards to earn rather than pay for, then we know that they care about their fans more than about money. And that'll be great to show that gesture to the older Halo fans, at least that. To the ones that I can lost their jobs for. Can't find a job. Even a part-time job. I can't even get a, a job at Subway Sandwiches right now because they're not hiring for, for, due to the lack of uh, sales. Try, so I started to put my personal life out there for a second. But, you know, I tried to apply for Subway at most of these places throughout the city. And I worked for Subway in the past. So it's like, you know... I'm not saying that I'm going to be the top choice altogether, altogether, all the time, every time. But with with, with what what they saw in my resume, they kind of at least be like, man, well, you just got some some weekend work, you know. But I can't get that because if I have a, at least a week a weekend job at working fast food, okay, I can spend three, two to five dollars a week on cosmetics or the not cosmetics, cosmetics like the blue green all that stuff. Talk about the skins like the samurai outfit and the flaming helmet and the flaming armor effect, all that stuff. So that's pretty cool that they have. I'll definitely will do that, but not the colors. I would not spend money on colors. 
just gold. That's it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Game Pass Ultimate. That's not. That's not real. That's not really cheap either. It's fifteen dollars, I think, for the single month. If you go month by month, and it's like a hundred eighty dollars, I think, for the whole year. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I mean, so you're paying a hundred eighty dollars that gives you access to a couple hundred other games, but you'll get XP boost or double XP boost and special challenges in this one game. Yes. It's 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 it's, it's almost counterproductive. I mean, well, it's, 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 it's Xbox, a, so it's Xbox game. It's not because uh, if it was Call of Duty, you can't do that because Activision's work. It's Activision's baby, you know, Call of Duty. But if it's Halo yeah. and that's Xbox, then they could do that. So. But my point is, like, it's almost like saying, okay, uh, if you have a GameFly monthly subscription, you'll get special, um, you'll get special stuff in, um, you'll get, spe- you'll get more powerful guns in Bulletstorm, and it's okay, great, you can rent Bulletstorm from GameFly, but you can also rent a couple hundred other games. Yes. And it's ju- and it's just and so it's, it's kind of like you know you're paying. The whole reason for Game Pass Ultimate or Gamefly subscription would be to um, try out a whole bunch of different games, not get benefits in one game. It should cost all games. Yeah, at least at least other than half of them, at least that. But most of the games that Xbox currently has on the store, and let, let alone altogether on their archives, that's publicly available to people. Uh, they're basically have like third party copyright uh, copyright law, so they can't just like you know do something special for one game like Fear for example or Max Payne three for example, like uh, those games don't require the Rockstar and Monolith or uh, Sierra if they still exist. That is Sierra is an old company for the Alien Resurrection part of two game and Alien Resurrection part altogether. So, right. Well, I mean, Game Pass uh, also was uh, that's why Microsoft was buying up. Uh, as many game studios as they could so they could have more options on Game Pass um, at any one time. But I'm just saying, you know, it's it's weird to pay for something that lets you try out a whole smorgasbord of games and they think, hey, get that subscription so you have this, so you get special um, perks in this one game. Mm. Good idea, at first, yeah. But uh, right, uh, when, it comes, uh, when it comes out to the cosmetics, or whatever they gotta approve on that, 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 that little by little as time goes. Along. I know it's just like little by little, but they they, they basically took a risk of uh, put it out the game fifteen to twenty days before the, the official release of the multiplayer aspect of Halo Infinite. So that's a good move on their part because they knew that Vanguard, Call of Duty Vanguard, and uh, Battlefield Twenty Four Two will suck at their game playing. But with Halo Infinite, it's the best out of all three for this year, specifically. So they're getting their extra, you know, 1,000 grand, grandioso uh, a customer or two. And they got the 50,000 other $5, $10, $20 expenditures on the skin. So that's so they're making a few mil- a couple million dollars in, the, in their first week or two. But, hey, that, that's, that's, that's their on them. That's their business model now for most of these old, smaller gamers, these uh, younger gamers, so. So, anyway, that's um, the news on Halo Infinite. Um, mm-hmm. There's a new game coming out. Aftermath is a new survival horror game pitting players against an alien invasion. Um, I got the... I got the article. Uh, developer 101 Games and Meta Publishing have pulled the curtain back on Aftermath, a new survival horror game coming next year in 2022. Uh, players control an astronaut who returns to Earth after a mission only to find the planet upended by an alien invasion. After a botched entry, uh, after a botched re-entry to Earth, excuse me, protagonist Charlie Gray finds herself alone. Emotionally broken, but driven by a singular mission to locate her missing daughter. She's up against an intimidating extraterrestrial menace, specifically an invisible hunter, tracking her every move. Charlie must outwit this foe to survive while also confronting more in-your-face threats such as shambling corpse-like creatures and over-the-shoulder third-person combat. Charlie may not be a soldier, but she is a brilliant engineer using those skills to 
uh, concoct blueprints for tools by examining everyday objects. Think of her like a, a modern-day MacGyver. As a survival game, managing Charlie's nutrition, hydration, and mental health are vital. Um, it says, after Matt's foreboding presentation and atmosphere come courtesy of artist um, Alessandro Bavari, art designer for Alien Covenant, the soundtrack boasts original tracks from artists such as Uncle, Planet Funk, and others. I've never heard of those bands. <laughs> if Aftermath piques your interest, keep an eye out when it launches in 22 for for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, and PC. So, with that, after hearing that, what do you think of Aftermath? Well, or, I, um, I, is have it a, after, I have a question. Is it though. Aftermath or... Aftermath. Yeah, it is Aftermath. What do you think of Aftermath? Um, well, if I may ask a question first, is it is it like kind of like a, a a stylized version of Dead Space? It's gonna be it's gonna be like that, but with this uh, basically instead of running around with a gun, uh, basically you're gonna be finding uh, you're gonna be finding uh, blueprints, kind of I guess like Dead Rising, where you create different weapons to fight off alien invasion and alien invasion. So it's probably not going to be a shooter so much, but you'll probably have like a lot more melee weapons that you can um you have many melee weapons that you can uh create and then use. Okay, so it's like uh, Dead Space meets Dead Rising. <laughs> yeah, uh, just a lot less shooting from what it sounds like. Yeah, it's more Dead Rising than Dead Space, but it's still a mixture of the two. Still, that's not bad. That's a good, that's a good uh, approach. I can, I can think about some buying that game for about. I can't buy it right away, but I can think about buying it for about 30, 50 bucks. You know, get it got super well, on. Well, we're gonna, uh, we're not, we wouldn't be able to buy it because uh, we have, um, because we. Uh, they said it's only coming out for PS5, Xbox Series, PS4, and PC. So it so even the, so it might not come out on Xbox One. Oh yeah, it's been a, a year now since the of the Xbox Series and PS5. So yeah, this is the trend. This was another transition year, it, pretty much. It, the thing is, what I don't understand is it's coming out on PS4. So why wouldn't they do Xbox One also? I guess the Xbox lost the rights to get, put them on the Xbox One because. Because what I see, and what I gather overall about copyright uh, with games and such, that Xbox One has their own specific uh, standards, and the time of the matter was the uh, able to trademark with the with the other games at the time. So I guess Xbox must have lost the ball on that, in my perspective, in, in layman terms. That is, I'm not Mister Know It All, but that's in layman terms. So, okay, it's it's just kind of weird because it's like it's almost it's almost like. Oh, we'll have this uh, to use, like, a, to, I mean, it's like uh, coming out, it's like the game's coming out on PlayStation 2, Xbox uh, 360, and PlayStation. But no, but, but, but no original Xbox. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, it's coming out on PS2 still? What? No, 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 I was using that as an example. I was about to say that this continues since 2014, 2013 PS2. They were getting yeah. because while while 360 and the PS3 were still making money, they still selling PS2 back then in 2013. Yeah. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. PS2 was, is one of the, the best systems of, of all of all gaming history, of all console history to begin with. So, I, I, you, I give uh, kudos just to excuse Sony. just just excuse me for a minute. I'm just gonna get something to drink. Yeah, sure. So so basically. In my perspective, I think that this aftermath gateway will be good and suitable for, for, for understanding about how to alleviate and discern certain weapons to use at certain times of certain enemies. So I, I heard about Aftermath, I think I saw a couple of pictures of them, maybe on the Xbox store most likely. Um the yeah, Aftermath, I think it's gonna be an interesting game to play. If it's also don't make it too expensive, like it's sixty five dollars or now it's gonna be seventy dollars. Actually, I heard plus tax. That'd be like seventy six, seventy seven dollars right there. So, and then in Canada and Australia, especially in Australia, and Canada, they gotta be spending a hundred dollars, maybe ninety at least, on this game. All games, all, it's just up until 
now, from now, here on out. So, that's what's going on with, uh, with Australia and Canada, and parts of the United Kingdom especially. Um, their prices went up greatly over, uh, over the months, and uh, now most games in their, those countries are now having to um, sell, sell for $75, $80. It depends on what, which, which game it is, what edition it is, because most of this is like that of like say the SSP Odyssey. The SSP Odyssey had about what? I would say like about three different, four different versions. You got the basic game, you got the um the le the legendary edition, they got the gold edition, they got this uh limited edition. So it's like <laughs> well, which one to pick for for who and for what? So for me I want it standard for Odyssey, but you know, to me, it's like I think it's just to get out of yet. But I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed um, in the past, and Assassin's Creed wasn't so bad. So, other than that, get back to playing with the batter. Aftermath definitely is going to be an interesting game to play sometime next year. So, give James yeah, a, so, a couple more minutes. You got me back, to, uh, Triple J? Yeah, I'm back. Um, yeah, I've been talking about Aftermath in, in, in detail and comparing it with uh, Dead Rising and uh, with. Uh, What's that called? With uh, Dead Space, as long with uh, price comparisons of the, of the China, of of Australia and and um and you know other countries, things like that. So, yeah. Just one thing I remember from Dead Rising that I really didn't like, especially in games. I think it was three and four. Um, when you had to, when you were looking for uh, plans to um, uh, create weapons. Like in the, I think in the first two Dead Risings, you could experiment. You know, yeah. hey, this this weapon can be this icon can be combined with something. If it could be combined with something, it have a little wench icon in your inventory under that item. Um, and you could try, you know, just mixing and matching. Hey, what if I put this weapon on the workbench and this item on the workbench? Will something create, or will I just pick up the first item again? Um, three and four then made you find blueprints. You couldn't even experiment. You could only put weapons together if you had the um, if you had the corresponding blueprint to create that weapon. Hmm. I hope if if um, if since Aftermath is going to have blueprints like that, I hope that they'll at least let you experiment putting uh, you know, crafting weapons. But um, that, that's my only hope. But on um, on the other hand, Aftermath, is that coming from your end? Yeah, sorry about that. That was my aunt coffee in the background. Sorry about okay. that. Um, so, Aftermath, it sounds it sounds like a good, uh, interesting concept. I definitely play it, but I don't have Xbox Series. Um, maybe if it's, um, you know, but if I did have an Xbox Series SRX or a PS5 or PS4, I would definitely want to try check this game out. And I had a decent PC uh, that I can run with two terabyte and a uh, sixteen gigabyte of RAM. Pretty much all the all the good good stuff to run a uh, twenty twenty computer to a, a game. That would be great. You know, I'll definitely buy the uh, Aftermath with no problem. Yeah. So um, Aftermath sounds great. Unfortunately, it's not a game that I would be able to try out. At least not now. Um, I don't have the corresponding systems now to try it. I don't think my laptop would be powerful enough to run it. Yes. But, but hey, it still sounds it still sounds like an awesome game. It looks awesome. Okay. Next, um, Titanfall. Uh, Titanfall will be removed from its subscription services for good in March. Mm. Uh, for people watching on my end, I'm going to show the articles as I read them. Uh, Respawn Entertainment has announced that its first game, 2014's multiplayer-only Titanfall, has been delisted from storefronts and will remain delisted forever. This means that anyone who doesn't own Titanfall digitally will now not be able to as it's no longer available for purchase on digital storefronts. However, you could still technically find a physical copy and own it that way. I have, I think I have Titanfall, uh, yeah, I think I do have the first one for Xbox One for sale uh, in my store. 
Titanfall will also be removed from subscription services on March 1st, which means it'll be taken off Game Pass and EA Play that day. Fortunately for those that do already own it, Respawn says it's keeping servers live, so actually playing it is still possible, at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, and I can read the statement uh, from them. It says, Titanfall is part of our DNA at Respawn. It's a game that showcased the ambitions of the studio when it was first released more than seven years ago. It continues to be a beacon of innovation that we drive for, uh, strive for in all of our games. We made the decision to discontinue new sales of the original Titanfall game, so it's the first one, starting today, and we'll be removing the game from subscription services on March 1st, 2022. We will, however, be keeping servers live for the force, for the decade fan base still playing and those who own the game and are looking to drop into a match. Rest assured, Titanfall is core to Respawn's DNA, and this incredible universe will continue. Today, in Titanfall 2 and Apex Legends and in the future, this franchise is a north star for the caliber of experiences we will continue to create here. Respawn, thank you for the entire res- uh, from the entire Respawn team. Okay. So yeah. basic. So, um, what do you think about this? This, this is kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, they removed. They were moving it from all storefronts digitally, but they can keep the servers up for people who want. Play. That's yes. It's, it is weird because uh, unless they try to focus all their server power, whatever it's called, with the. What their money situation is, they're trying to focus all the Apex Legends and Titanfall 3, if there is going to be a Titanfall 3, so... Hello? Triple J? Yeah, okay, you're back. Yeah, my internet got disconnected for a second, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so, um, did you hear everything I said in the article? Yes, I did. So, I was okay, trying to so... say, what I'm trying to say is that it sounds like they're trying to convert or mis not misappropriate, excuse me, but that's a bad that's a bad word. Or they try to solidify or consolidate all their resources towards Apex Legends, Titanfall Two, and most likely a Titanfall Three game that they may, may still be in development as we speak. So, or they start to go, they're going to start making the Titanfall Three. So that's what I'm thinking of because even though it's on PlayStation, Xbox One. Xbox Series, everything else, as port- compatible with these newer systems, it's... I don't know I don't know what they're trying to do exactly, because that, all I can think of is that they made some sort of deal with, between the Sony and PlayStation uh, or, and Xbox and Microsoft that, uh, yeah, we gotta, gotta cut the fat. And uh, they tried to... Because Titanfall has horrible connection problems between Titanfall 1 and 2, I heard. Titanfall 2 definitely has hacker problems too so whatever happened in Titanfall 1 and 2 between those two games online especially they had, now they're trying to make sure the resources are not allocated in, in, impromptu matters or in the the fact not the fact but more like just this weird uh, conundrum in a sense of the matter so that's what they're trying to do in my perspective just so I look at listen to that article uh, information yeah, um, it's just weird that they're removing it from digital storefronts, but they're going to keep servers up. You would think if they were going to move it from the digital storefront, the servers would be next to go. Yes. Um, so for anyone who's interested, I do have, I think, the first Titanfall for Xbox One, if you're interested in purchasing it. Um, but it's, but yeah, if you're interested, if you... Uh, we're interested in trying out this game. Uh, you have to get it, and you want to get it digitally, you have to do so before March. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're going to have to find a physical copy on eBay or from or from someone else who's selling it. Stone Age Gamers, I bet, got to sell it. Got copies of it, too. Yeah, but yeah, the thing is... sponsored by them, but, you know, I heard they're a good, a good uh, small store to buy from online, because they do online... Uh, purchases as well. Yeah, it's just, but I mean, the whole thing just, it sounds like they're not telling us something. Uh, you know, it's like their actions say one thing, but what they promise is 
saying something else. Um, but it's just weird that um, they're going to remove it, but they said we'll, we'll still be supporting this game. Um, so, yeah, if you were interested in Titanfall and you want it digitally, you have to get it before March. Mm-hmm. If you, But they'll still be allowing people to sell it physically um, afterwards. Okay. So... Yeah. yeah, it's a good game to play online, but there's no like story mode or story for the casual gamers, or at least the the, the moderate games. And myself, for example, I play in moderation. So I'll, if I, I last time I played Titanfall, the first one that is, I played only like a, not even thirty minutes for it because it was that I don't see no connection with the Titanfall at first. But by Titanfall two, now they have a story. The first what fifteen twenty minutes I played of it, it wasn't so bad. It was average at first, but I'm hearing. Based on my friend online, like my my confidant, I like to call him my my gaming confidant, enjoy gaming. His friend, not con- enjoy gaming, but his friend from his um, school, whatever, to explain that, oh, uh, there's a good story mode, a damn good story in, um, throughout the Titanfall campaign. I was like, really? Because I was bored after not even thirty minutes of, of the campaign of Titanfall two, because the first thirty minutes that is, and. There was no essence, there was no connection at first. But it was still average stories. So I was like, okay, I'll still play. So one day I'll, I'll do a gameplay, uh, sample gameplay, see what happens after that. So. Yes, and, you know, um, like I said, I got a copy for sale if you're interested. Um, I never played Titanfall, so I can't comment on the gameplay. It does sound like it's just a battle uh, game with no story, at least the first one. Um, but like I said, the whole situation just sounds weird. It sounds like, it, and to me, it sounds like they're not saying something. Yeah. You know, like there's more story to the why they're delisting it, but they're not telling us what that is. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, ready to move on? Yes, I am. Okay, next story. Um, Amazon Prime Games uh, coming to Prime. Um, I have that pulled up. Uh, new games coming for December. Uh, we're in, where it's currently December 4th. So, Amazon has announced the games which Prime customers can play for free this month with eight new games. They are free to download for anyone who holds an Amazon, Amazon Prime membership and are available to, through January 3rd in most cases. The game comes from a wide range of genres, including racing, all the way to point-and-click adventures. Prime Gaming members must claim titles through the website before they can be played. Here are the following games. Uh, Need for Speed High Pursuit Remastered mm-hmm. requires Origin. You have to get that on or before December 31st. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll only be available to December 31st, so you probably have till 30th to get it. Uh, Frostpunk. Uh, Journey to the Savage Planet and then the next five games require the Amazon Games app to play and only available on Windows those five games are Mork Red Spellcaster University YouTuber's Life Stubbs the Zombie and Rebel Without a Pulse and The Complete Tales of Monkey Island which will come in five separate chapters there's also 37 different in-game loot and bundles also available to download for free. This includes packs for popular games such as Valorant, Fall Guys, Genshin Impact, League of Legends, and FIFA 22. Claiming bundles will give players a code that can be redeemed for different consoles, not only PC. Bundles are only available for a limited time with varying expiration dates, some as soon as December 2nd, while others will be available until the end of the month. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, so that's, uh, those are the games coming to, um, Amazon Prime. Mm. Um, so that's that best selection. The Rebel Without a Pulse game, I heard of that before. That's the game that came with the Halo engine made with it. So, uh, I should have bought that game for the Xbox original, but, uh, unfortunately, you know, that might cost a, a bundle right now as we speak, so. But right now, I could not have a chance with a, it's a half Amazon Prime. I will admit that I'm publicly on camera that I have Amazon Prime. I know it's like, the evil corporations, man. I know, I know. But still, you know, Amazon has a good lineup of 
good games for us gamers as well. So they're, they're spread into different markets and they're doing their business as is approach. Not not little self proprietorship because they're a corporation, but they're doing their ad, 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 adapting to the, the to the to the world at large. So Amazon's getting there because uh, ten years ago Amazon was just selling what books or well, fifteen years ago especially they were just selling books, a couple of DVDs, and that's about it. Not literal terms, but by 2015, 2016, they have like everything you need on that site. So, pretty cool. Yeah, um, so what do you know about that zombie, uh, that Stubbs Rebel Without a Pulse game? Uh, what do you know about it? Well, if I recall correctly, it's the right zombie game. Hopefully I got, got it right, because it's based on the Halo engine that came out back in when the Halo, Halo Combat Evolved, uh, Came around that time, but for the PC and Xbox, or it's for the PC. It was for Xbox only. Then went to PC port later on. So it's basically about this Stubbs a zombie where you just wander around the world, uh, the Earth. You know, just yeah, moving around the, the zombies. I'm a zombie, and he uses his says attacks on people and eat them and bite them and people shoot at him, the zombie, as well as capture him or whatever. Last time I checked, that is, you know, excuse me if I'm doing a Mandela effect on, on you guys, but that's what I that's what I saw of gameplay from many years ago on YouTube. I'm not sure if it's still there, the gameplay of the one I want, that, that I saw, but I'm sure it's still there to for anyone to watch the, the gameplay about the trailer, and I hope you can get your hands on it, because it's expensive as hell, I know, I know for a fact. Especially if it's on Xbox, so... I'm familiar with a couple of these games myself. I've heard of the Monkey Island games. I've never played any of them, so I can't comment on them. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Need for Need uh, for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered. Uh, it's going to be um, it's going to be really great graphics. I don't know about you. I play. I have Need for Speed Hot Pursuit uh, for sale on PlayStation Three, and it was just really hard to see in that game. Um, well, like when I tried streaming it, um, even playing on my TV wasn't that clear. So I guess uh, those issues are going to be fixed in the remastered version. Um, also, YouTuber's Life, um, the story is kind of silly. Mm -hmm. um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because basically, you're supposed to come. You basically you become like an important guy. You know, you become this rich guy for making videos on YouTube, and then it, it sends you back to the beginning of your YouTube career. And the demo I saw only allowed people to uh, run a gaming channel. Uh, they did. They said they were going to introduce more um, genres like vlogging or um, or other genres of videos you could do besides gaming. And you see, you know, this guy making a gaming video, and like Sim style, he do, he does it automatically when you tell him to do it, and then he's, and then you can keep track on how much money that video is making, um, as and and I guess you know you you move up from there. Personally, I I couldn't watch the game long enough because. This was back when YouTube partnerships was open to everybody. I just thought, why am I watching this game when I can make a video myself? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big thing back in 2015, 2016. Right before Susan Wajuki became CEO of YouTube, it was it was anyone's game on YouTube to be a YouTuber gamer, a YouTuber, uh, a makeup artist, or even a next PewDiePie. If we had that still going on to this day, there'd be at least three other PewDiePies coming up in ranks, and they'll all have 70, 80, maybe even 90 million subscribers on each of their accounts. PewDiePie now is 110 million, 105 last time I checked. So it's everyone's game back then. But by the time Susan became a CEO, within two years, they got rid of the partnerships for everyone to, to a point of making it a uh, fair game where you get 1,000 hours of watch time or 40,000 hour, 40, hours of watch time or something of that sort. And 1,000 subscribers and uh, something about uh, if you have like several videos opening uh, constantly on YouTube but uh, uploaded and stuff. So okay, no big deal. But it also has like, restricted it further and further and further and now it's just uh, vanilla YouTube. And that's what's going on now. Only a select few places. People are slowly but surely. 
after a while, it's like few people are leaving YouTube, whether big or small, are leaving YouTube altogether, or they lesser their usage of it for video making or usage of watching videos. Now, hey, I can go on BitChute where those conspiracy theorists are at. Hey, I can go to uh, Oprah.com where she has like, a makeup artist, you know, being interviewed and stuff like that. I don't know what's going on with Oprah, other guys. I'm just saying that as a fact because I, I watch Oprah with my mom a lot. Not with her mom, but she, she, my mom was encouraging me to watch Oprah videos and stuff, so, about weight loss and stuff like that, you know, you go guy, you go girl, you know, but anyway, the point is, <laughs> talk shows from the 90s are not, uh, are not a high point. Yes, that's what, <laughs> <laughs> I miss, I miss those days of TV, it was great, it was, I don't, because it felt like there was reality on TV, and there's your life. As the as separate the two, now the internet kind of merged the two together. Now it's like, yeah, we don't know what's real or not anymore. After a while, not to sound very truthful, at the same time, wow, this is like this is interesting. Life can just be wherever you want it to be now, literally. <laughs> anyway, so YouTuber's life um, is it seems like a fun game um, from anyway from what I saw. Like I said. Uh, when I when uh, I think Warcorp six 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 on his old oh, yeah. channel, yeah. Uh, when he played the demo of it, uh, gaming was the only category available at the time, and it just looks like a fun game. Um, it, the only thing is, I would think you know, I have a partnership on Daily Motion, which is for more or less a dead website, um, but, it's, but I can still upload videos most videos without any problems you know I'd rather try to make money off those videos because some because someone's watching them yes um but on the but uh yeah so uh um a YouTuber's life it's gonna be it's still a fun game anyway um I wish um I wish that they had kept the partnerships open to everyone because uh what they what they did uh, I forget what year it was. Um, I think it was Logan Paul who messed it up for everyone. The dead body, thing, uh, right? Huh? The dead body ordeal, right? Yeah, when he showed a real dead body in his video, and then YouTube, in their brilliant uh, mind, in their brilliant business mind, said, "Okay, we're going to punish everyone. We're going to punish." You know, that's when they said, "Okay, instead of having a certain amount of views lifetime." You also have to have a certain amount of subscribers and a certain amount of views over the past month. And it's like, wait a minute. All these people did nothing wrong, but now you're moving the goalpost for them because of this Yahoo. And this Yahoo that uh, did the wrong thing probably has enough big enough fan base where the uh, goalpost being moved isn't going to affect him. What sense does that make? You're, you're, you know, uh, damn the innocent, but give the guilty party a pass. Yeah, it's uh, no more peanut pies anymore. You can tell there would never be on YouTube pie. anyway. Yeah, YouTube so specifically, because peanut pie is called is pretty pretty much the god of YouTube at this point with what he got now. I mean, I don't want to say he had over 105 million subscribers last time I checked, and even though his viewership is down by at least what 50 percent. He still gets as mo a lot more views than cable, not only cable news, but also cable channels like Oxygen, uh, the Food Network, uh, a uh, not AEW, that that's wrestling, of course. But but even hell, even WWE's uh, um network on description on network, I think they got more. He got more views on them than their subscribers and stuff. It's PewDiePie got, got is is so lucky. He's the most lucky SOB out there. On the YouTube in the YouTube community, and I have to say, I don't think I, 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 don't think, I don't think I wouldn't I wouldn't say he's lucky. I think maybe luck had a little part to play with his success, but he just found something that a lot of people gravitated towards. Yeah, and uh, the one thing I do remember, Game Informer one month I forget what year it was. Um, they did an interview with PewDiePie because he was so uh, well known on YouTube. And the guy makes millions of dollars a year, but one thing I heard is, with all this success, he also donates a lot of it to charity. Hmm. You know, he keeps what he needs. I 
assume he's smart enough to be building a um a, a financial egg. So when he wants to quit YouTube, he never has to work a day in his life. Yeah, you know, he's probably all got all that saved. But he also donates a lot of money to charity. And he has life and, insurance where he can help out Marzia in case if that was the PewDiePie. So that's a good thing. So, I mean, you know, PewDiePie, on one hand, you know, you could hate, you could wish that you had his success. That's fine. I wish I was as six, um, well known as him. But on the other hand, uh, you know, he, sa- he seems like a nice guy. Uh, yes. Real <laughs> class act. So, there's no, you know, there's no skeletons in this closet that's so grandiose, so like, oh my god, type of shock. You know what I'm saying? Like, and like yes, we know PewDiePie is into video games. We know PewDiePie may hang around guys that talk about girls all day long. Whoopee. Like all guys did back in the 90s. Come on now. Especially in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, so, so, I mean, you know, if, if, PewDiePie or any of his fans see this, congratulations. You deserve the success that you have gotten. And I hope and I hope it lasts for more for many more years as long as you want to do uh as long as you want to make gaming videos, whether they're on YouTube or if you decide to go somewhere else. Um But at, on the other hand, do I wish I had his fan base? Of course. Uh, you know, but I'm I'm gonna end up trying to build it somewhere else. You know, if I if I never if I never even get point zero one percent of his uh, as much as his fan base, so be it. I'm still gonna try. Definitely, and I'm gonna bitch shit after YouTube shuts down, or if YouTube is like you know out of service, or even turn it to a weird site on music like MySpace did. You know, because that, that's the next step for YouTube now is to turn it to into a commercialized you know mainline. All TV descriptions, all TV, no uploaded, no nothing, just typical TV programming for for every YouTuber out there, supposedly speaking. And I'm like, oh, I did my best, and I'm more on this bitch where all the misfits are at, it's like me. So I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be hanging out I'll over there very well. <laughs> yeah, as for me, you know, I think the more websites I'm on. The better, so you know I'm on Bitchute, I'm on Daily Motion, I'm on Rumble, um, I'm on Twitch, um, you know, and I'm basically I'm trying to build up my Twitch following. Indeed. Okay, ready to move on? Yeah, what's the next thing on our list, guys? Okay, new games coming to Game Pass in December. Um, hold on, let me uh, turn on. I this song about, for people. We're talking about the all oh, Xbox Game Pass, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Among Us, Final Fantasy Thirteen uh, Dash Two, mm. Stardew Valley, and more coming to Xbox Game Pass. Mm. Um, the first round of Xbox Game Pass titles for December have been announced, and they start uh, December second with seven games dropping. First up is the new one title, Anvil, for console and PC. In the game, you are part of an agency called the Angel, Ancient Vault Investigation Lab, Anvil for short, that is searching for the remnants of alien civilizations across the universe. As a breaker, you'll search galaxies for ancient alien vaults, and each galaxy consists of random planets and unique monsters. Defeating them and opening these vaults, you'll be able to utilize the powers hidden within. Alongside Anvil comes Arcvale for cloud console on PC, another day one Game Pass title. Arcvale is a bullet-ridden action affair with RPG elements where you'll master weapons and skills needed to overcome various enemies located throughout an ever-changing world. Only by conquering these evil forces will you uncover the truth about the long-fabled um, Arcvale. Also coming up on December 2nd is the follow-up to Final Fantasy XIII, which is Final Fantasy XIII-2 for console and PC. Alongside the Square Enix title is what should be relaxing Game Pass entry, Lawn Mowing Simulator. Oh, that's gonna that's gonna be the uh, uh, ticket. That's gonna be the hot um, <laughs> new game. <laughs> If you consider uh, mowing lawns across the great British countryside relaxing, that is, it's coming to cloud console and PC. Oh, I can't! I can't wait to get my hands on that game. 
My nipples. It's, it's, it's going to be hard to overcome that one. My nipples are hurting me now. <laughs> Stardew Valley will also arrive on December 2nd for the same platforms. Rubber Bandits releases day one on the same day for cloud console and PC. In this multiplayer beat em up brawler, you will try to steal, smash, and scavenge as much cash as possible through physics based combat. You will need to dodge traps, bash rival bandits, and run from the police in order to pull off the perfect heist. Expect to be wielding wacky weapons, and you can choose from some rather interesting criminal characters. The final game landing December 2nd is the, front, is the turn-based strategy title Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector for cloud console and PC. That's going to be interesting. On December 7th, Space Warlord Oregon Trading Simulator, um, December 7th will be this coming Tuesday, um, comes... Uh, Space Warlord Oregon Trading Simulator comes to Game Pass for cloud console and PC as a day one drop. If in it, you will sell and trade organs to various clients. In the process, you will also have to perform certain feats like keeping vampire leech organs from, devour from devouring the goods inside your cargo hold, teaching Flesh D the snowman to love, and more. Sounds pretty interesting to us. Ugh. The website, you know, to its own. Mm -hmm. uh, coming December 8th is a game that needs no introduction, Halo Infinite. You will be able to download it for cloud console or PC. Uh, the following day, December 9th, we'll see One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 arrive on a service for cloud console and PC. In it, you will fight hordes of enemies, adventure with trusted allies, and experience action uh, lifted straight from the anime. On December 14th, you will be able to grab Aliens, Fireteam Elite for Cloud Console and PC, and Among Us will also arrive on the service that same day for console. Uh, more games coming to the service means some will be leaving. You will have until December 15th to nab the following games before they disappear. Beholder the Dark Pictures, Man of Madon, Guacamelee 2, Wilmot's Warehouse, Unto the End, uh, and ukulele and the impossible lair. So um, I have to ask. Yeah. Uh, you do you? I obviously you're interested in Halo Infinite. Are there any of the other games that you're interested in? Thirteen two would be interesting because I wish it was thir the original Final, uh, Final Fantasy thirteen. I think it'd be available for the Game Pass even for a couple of months because I want to know about more about that story altogether of, of thirteen. Uh, 12 and 11, I heard, one of those two were sucked horribly on PC. And, uh, you know, that's fine. I can understand that feeling. Um, 13 was revolutionary uh, for, the, for the Xbox 360 PS3 era. Because that's when they started introducing different elements to the game and stuff. And focusing on a female protagonist more than ever uh, than usual of any Final Fantasy game like last time I checked. And um, Lightning is one of the main characters that, in that game. Now, there's three Final Fantasy 13 games. There's Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy 13 2, and then Lightning Returns Final Fantasy. I want to get the first one first. But, 13 2, okay. I'll try to find a way to play. I'll try to find a way to play the first 13 by buying it for about 10 bucks or something like that on eBay, whatever. And then play that through like crazy, and then. Two hours and thirteen two as like part of my game pass or whatever. So that's if I have that kind of time. On my hands. Yeah, as long as if Kelvin can continue to keep going, I'm okay with the matter to keep going to for thirteen two. <laughs> and like the return, so <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so um yeah, most of these most I have to say those games none of those games really um interested me. Um, I did play, but on the other hand, I did play, uh, what well, I did play, um, Final Fantasy 13, uh, for a while. I never actually played 13 2 that long. I played it maybe once. Okay. Um, so, you know, none of the games, I have to say, none of the games really, um, interest me. Um, lawnmower man, I, I, that lawnmower si simulating game. How are they gonna top that? Um, 
Unless you give me, right. like a, unless you give me a 500 gamer score achievement, I can play that then. <laughs> So, but, yeah, so, I mean, if you, if you like any of these games that we mentioned, uh, they, they actually, uh, most of them should be on Game Pass at the time of this recording. Some of them are coming later this month in December. And keep in mind, the games I listed at the end of, um, are the games that are going to be, uh, they're going to be the, um, they're going to be the games that are, Right. So keep that in mind. Um, keep that in mind um, in case your favorite game, like U- Ukulele, is leaving. Right. Um, I think I already got Ukulele. Uh, if I recall correctly, it was an Xbox Gold uh, for Xbox Gold Pass members, or not Gold Pass, the Gold membership members. And uh, if I, I never played it yet, but. It looks good to those who are into the 2000s or late, you know, late 2000s of that game. You know, it's similar to like playing Crash Bandicoot or Spyro the Dragon, Rayman, but it's not the best, the best ever platform game out there. Last time I checked, so. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah. So if you liked any of the games that we mentioned, uh, just keep it. Just keep in mind that, you know. Um, if you like any of the games that we mentioned, just remember that they're going to be on Game Pass. And I guess Game Pass can only hold so many games online at once, mm. which means some of the games we said are going to be leaving. If any of those are your favorites, make sure to buy them before they're off Game Pass. Yeah. Um, okay, so this article is having trouble loading, but um, if you're ready to go on, I'll go on. Yeah, what's the next uh, topic we got here? Uh, I think uh, I think it'd be interesting to hear about this uh, one that we, or that you mentioned in, in, to me in the messages. Uh, you told me that. Uh, well, first you could give the honors. Okay, uh, PlayStation is introducing Spartacus, which will challenge be a challenger to Game Pass. Hmm. So the basic so Sony is basically making a competitor to Game Pass. So if uh. If PlayStation Plus, I guess, was the competitor to Games with Gold from Microsoft, now PlayStation's working on something to counter Xbox Game Pass. And, you know, I tried to open the article. Um, my computer is being finicky. Um, what, do you th- what do you think? Do you think this is a good thing that PlayStation is trying to get into that uh, Game Pass? is trying to get some of that Game Pass money. I have a question with a question first. Spartacus, is that based upon the TV show from uh, Sci-Fi? No. Okay, because there was a TV show back on Sci-Fi back in the 2010s called Spartacus. Excuse me. And I watched the last episode of the, the, the season finale or the series finale of Spartacus. And basically... In that particular Spartacus series is when uh, it's like kind of like similar to that of uh, Gladiator, the movie with Russell Crowe in it, except for it's, it's at least three, four, or five seasons long. So you know you become this uh, this strong beast, not beast, but like you know, you basically a sporting like guy, but you get strong. You you fight you fight after fight in the Coliseum, whatever, and then one day. You and your uh, partners uh, team up to take over the kingdom, or the the king, or whatever at the time who was putting you down to it to your to to the ground. And uh, one is another. You kill everyone that was uh, in a witness to all your heinous crimes of whatever. And then one is another. You just kill the king, and that's it. It's just move on, move out, spread out, move on, do our own thing in life. The heads the Spartacus way in a sense, but that's what I remember from that particular uh, TV show. But if it's not regarding about the TV show, then I'm not going to play it. Because I, I, when I think of that Spartacus the game, I thought it would be based upon this, the TV series, hopefully. So, if it's based on the TV series, I wouldn't mind playing it on a PlayStation. Wait, is it Spartacus? Are we talking about... Wait, I'm sorry. Spartacus is not a game. It's a game service. Oh! <laughs> Wait a second. I'm sorry. Let me revert back to what I'm trying to say. 
What I'm thinking of is that they're gonna do a a promo with the Spartacus actual TV series or whatever. In my perspective, so excuse me if I sound lop lopsided and lost in what I'm saying. So excuse me for that misappropriation. <laughs> Yes, so what I'm saying is, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't, uh, you know, I don't have a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5, so I don't, I could be wrong, but uh, the way I understand it, PlayStation Plus was uh, a competitor against Games with Gold, which is Microsoft's, um, which is from Microsoft. That was so so Spartacus um, will be a uh, competitor to Xbox uh, Game Pass Ultimate. Sorry about that, guys. That was so embarrassing. Now nah, nah, it's on record. <laughs> yeah, you went off. You went off talking about a TV show, and I told, and I even said at the beginning, it had nothing to do with that TV show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I like the series. It was the last episode, by the way, so <laughs> it was brutal. I don't know what sci-fi I was thinking of, but they did a good job putting that out there back then. And now you can watch it on DVD or whatever Blu-rays they have available on, on the online. So, But if they can put that together with the TV show, with this PlayStation Spartacus and the Spartacus TV series, I think I'll definitely buy the Game Pass on PS5, PS4, if ever. So if I read the PS5 and, and you do the Spartacus thing with the TV show and all, I will definitely buy it for the first month easily. No problem. <laughs> What's interesting is he's still talking about the TV show and he, <laughs> and he completely failed to answer my question. <laughs> It'll be interesting in, 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 in labor terms. In, in, for what do you want to, once you're trying to ask me that question, it's going to be an interesting uh, competition between Xbox and, uh, and uh, PlayStation. So. Yeah, so um, I'm trying to get the article to load. Um, I'll give my opinion on it if the article loads. Um, by the time I'm done giving my answer, then I'll read it. Um, basically, it's a game. It's a compared to Game Pass. Uh, PlayStation saying, "You got your thing. We're gonna come out with something like it." Um, honestly, competition's always great. It always benefits the consumer the most. Um, but at the same, but you know, um, I just hope that I just hope they know what they're doing. Because uh, you know. The whole thing with uh, Game Pass Ultimate being out for so long and having such a uh, and um, knowing what they're doing, basically, you can't have ha you can't have competition that's going to be half-assed. Definitely. If when you release this, whatever it's called, whether you want to call it Spartacus, Woman Gladiator Three Thousand, <laughs> uh, PlayStation Plus, Plus Times. Uh, Exponential, whatever, whatever the name is, <laughs> whatever the name's gonna be. <laughs> I kind of said a Greek name, like you know, uh, uh, well, that's if Xbox gonna take this, uh, PlayStation Pandora, which I was taken by the Pandora app or whatever. Pandora's so, box, yeah, yeah. That that would be, but you know, regardless what the name's gonna be, um, it's just gotta be. Uh, it's just got to be, um, it's got to be something that's ready to go when, whenever it comes out. Yes. Um, the article will not load. It's still, it's still, I'm still waiting for it. So, um, I'll, I'll try reloading the article, but if not, we're going to have to just, uh, go on to the, uh, last topic I have, because one topic I was also going to cover if none of my articles want to load down, um, like I said, uh, this this podcast could be called Murphy's Law for the number of things that could go wrong on any one episode. Podcast um, number one, Murphy's Law. Yeah, <laughs> and we call it Murphy's Law two after the next the next mishap. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be a cool series to have. And every few months we have technical problems like this. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could help you with that matter at, at, of that particular article, but the problem is by that time it's going to take too much time. So. Well, actually, you could, uh, you might be able to help me with this one. Can you pull up? Um, 
because the next topic we were going to cover is uh, the lineup for PlayStation Plus. The lineup for PlayStation Plus. Oh, wait a minute. Um, I, okay, PlayStation working on Xbox Game Pass competitor. That are, This article just loaded. Um, all right, so uh, PlayStation working on Xbox... Okay, both articles loaded. Wonderful. Uh, PlayStation working on Xbox Game Pass competitor. Hold on. Let me uh, turn on so you can... If you're on Twitch, you can see the article yourself. Sure, um, Okay. I can't see it. Share screen. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen on Discord. Um, All people see it on your on your live stream as well. Mine is audio only, so. Uh, PlayStation working. Okay, just hold on. Uh, I'm. That's how it loads. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just gonna read uh, because people oh, on Twitch can it. see it. I see it. Okay, perfect. All right, Sony is reportedly working on an Xbox Game Pass competitor that will include three tiers of service and essentially see PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now Merge. This news comes by the way of a Bloomberg report that says the service will be subscription-based, much like so, uh, PlayStation Plus and Now offerings, and of course Game Pass. The service, currently codenamed Spartacus, will let PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 owners pay a monthly fee for access to a catalog of both modern and classic games. The subscription we spread across three different tiers, and Bloomberg's report says the first and cheapest tier will basically be what players get with PlayStation Plus currently. The second tier will open players up to a larger library of PlayStation 4 and eventually PlayStation 5 games. The third tier will include the services of the first two tiers and access to extended game demos, game streaming, and a library of classic PS1, PS2, PS3, and PSP games. Uh, Bloomberg's report points towards Spartacus releasing in spring, which is also in PlayStation Plus and now will be merged. Sony reportedly plans to keep Plus branding around after the new service is out, but PlayStation Now will be phased out. One important thing to note is that Bloomberg says the documentation it reviewed rev uh, revealed that details on the service have yet to be finalized, so there's a chance things could change between now and spring. Uh, so... Yeah, basically, uh, that's one thing I forgot about. Um, oh, uh, let me. I don't know what happened. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, we're still live streaming. But anyway, uh, did you hear what I said when I was reading the article? Yeah, you were saying about the, these uh, new games coming out for uh, PlayStation Plus, things of that matter, and, uh, you know, I'm not sure the exact details, but it was something of that regarding. But I, I read up on the new lineup, though, on what you mentioned, and partial paraphrase it here. Uh, Blah well, 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 that's 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 what we'll be discussing next. Uh, Spartacus, which is just the code name now, uh, basically it's going to have three tiers. Uh, one will be what uh, PlayStation Plus is like now. Mm -hmm. The other will let people uh, play PlayStation Four and try it and PlayStation Five games. The third tier, which is the most expensive, will let people play PlayStation Classics, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and PSP games. That's not bad, actually. Wow. That's, that's uh, what they're doing to... Um, that's how Spartacus is going to uh, go against um, Xbox Game Pass. But here's the thing, you know, there's the downside to it. There are people out there like you and I, especially in your, 20, your 20s and 30s, we can pirate these things. Now, it sounds like I'm publicly supporting it, but this is what it is for how many decades since the internet started. So good luck trying to sell something where you get how many games for how many dollars, even if it's uh, $300 worth of PS1 games or $100 worth of PS2 games, depends upon where you go for these games. And you go to thrift stores and uh, flea markets. I mean, my friend... What a, a, at the flea market in Pennsylvania where we went to the Poconos, he got a, a, a Fear Effect a 
game called Fear Effect on PS1 for about like 10 bucks. Not even 15. And it was a brand new condition. Imagine that. Or at least like new. Because it was no scratches, no distraction. The casing was good. It was done. You could eat, eat off that thing. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, so, well, I mean, obviously, this, you know, uh, Spartacus is not going to have every PlayStation game. I can imagine the wrestling games like the SmackDown games and the SmackDown vs. Raw games are not going to be available. Obviously, other licensing issues will play a part if they're available. Tekken, but, Dead or Alive, uh, uh, Killer Instinct most likely might be a, a, pro a problem with, for PlayStation. Because uh, Xbox owns Killer Instinct in a sense. Because because that's exclusive rights for that new generation of Killer Instinct game, the back in 2013, 2014 of its release of the Xbox One uh, system. So yeah, so um, yeah, so uh, but the thing is, you know, like I said, competition is great because it benefits customers, just like us. Mm -hmm. And um, now people have a reason to get the PlayStation. Uh, you know, at, at least they're doing something, and at least, uh, you know, at least they're bringing back the classics in a way that everyone can love. Everyone was upset when PlayStation Store was shut down, which I think I can still access it through my PS3 for some reason, even though it was supposed to be shut down back in October. Yes. But, um, but yeah, but, you know, uh, like, they did say they were shutting down the PSP Store. Now you're going to be able to play all these games again if you're going to pay for the most expensive tier of what was PlayStation Plus. Okay. Or, as they're now calling it, Spartacus. Hmm. Uh, ready to move on? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, Discord was having problems showing uh, Discord, so I'm just going to have it show whatever I'm looking at. Um... PlayStation Plus lineup. I have the article for that. Uh, December PlayStation Plus lineup includes Godfall, Mortal Shell, and Lego DC Supervillains. <laughs> PlayStation has announced its December lineup, and as usual includes a PlayStation 5 game and two PlayStation 4 games. The three titles up for grabs um, is got our Godfall Challenger Edition, which is as available as both a PS5 and PS4 game, and Lego DC Super Villains and Mortal Shell, both of which are PS4 games. However, both Lego DC Super Villains and Mortal Shell will be playable on PS5 thanks to backward compatibility. Last month, the PlayStation Plus lineup consisted of six games Knockout City, Kingdoms of Amor, Re Reckoning. First Class Trouble, The Persistence, The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, and Until You Fall. The latter three are PSVR titles, and they're still available alongside this month's new PlayStation Plus lineup, and they'll remain available for players to add to the libraries until January 3rd. Mm -hmm. Getting back to this month's lineup, though, Godfall Challenger Edition focuses on three unique modes according to PlayStation, Lightbringer, Dreamstones, and the Ascended Tower of Trials. All three modes are considered end-game content, but players will be immediately equipped with a spread of deadly weapons and skill points, letting you team up with up to two other players in co-op. The Challenge Edition does not include the base game, nor does it include the newer Fire and Darkness campaign, but players can upgrade at any time to the Deluxe Edition to gain access to them. For more about Godfall, um, you can check out uh, Game Informer's review. LEGO DC Super Villains is a unique LEGO game set in the DC Universe in that while it features the heroes you've come to know and love in other LEGO DC games, this one centered on their villains, as its name would suggest. If you played a LEGO DC game before, you know what to, you're in for, except you can expect to hear the Joker laugh a lot more. Mm -hmm. The final free game is in the December PlayStation Plus lineup is Mortal Shell, a game heavily inspired by From Software Dark Souls series. Mortal Shell is a ruthless and deep single-player action RPG that tests your sanity and resilience in a shattered world. Um, as the remains of humanity wither, wither and rot, zealous foes fester in the ruins. They spare no mercy with survival, demanding superior awareness, precision, and instincts. 
track down hidden sanctums of devout followers and discover your true purpose. Um, all three of these games will go live for PlayStation Plus subscribers to add to their libraries on Tuesday, December 7th. That's this coming Tuesday. And everyone will have until Monday, January 3rd to grab them. While waiting for December 7th, be sure to add November's PlayStation Plus games to your library before these new ones drop. Now, uh, what do you think about um, what do you think about uh, these this new lineup for PlayStation Plus? Um, I would honestly be interested in Lego DC Super Villains. Um, I'm a big fan of the Lego games, okay. except Lego the movie, which was really awful. <laughs> Everything is awesome. I heard. <laughs> but um, do, are there any would any of these games? I know. You don't have a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, but just by how these games sound, would any of them spark your interest? Well, it would nice to play Lego, uh, a Lego game once in my lifetime, because I never played a Lego game before, and I own how many Lego games from the Xbox Gold alone. Because yeah. there was at least like two games that were on the Gold uh, membership for since 2014, and unfortunately I never got just to play the, any of the, uh, the Lego games. So, I would rather play... Um, the one that's most the most interesting of all, I would say, Godfall. I heard good things about that one. Um, now I'm not sure about how good Mortal Shell is, but it looks good on the pictures I'm looking at. So I have to look. I think about playing that game as well. That's the second choice. And then Lego DC Super Villains, I will definitely play whenever I have the time. I will claim it. I'll put, well, if, if it's a limited time, like the claim or whatever, I'll claim it first, and then I'll come back months later. And I'll play it you know, whenever I can. So that's if I have PS5, especially the PS5. So, uh, but if it's Xbox, Xbox Series and SX, which I see for Mortal Shell and Godfall, no, Mortal, uh, Mortal Shells uh, available on Xbox. Am I right? No, hold on a second. Mortal Shells available on both the Xbox Series X and S and PS4 and 5. So, all right, I think about doing Mortal Shell first for the Xbox One. Yeah, that's my first choice, so... Okay, um, and, uh, we got one more story coming up. I don't have an article for this one, but, um, Nintendo Switch Online adds no new games in November, and we you got one new game in December, which was Paper Mario. Basically, uh, Switch Online service, uh, they said if you want access to N64 titles and Sega Genesis titles, you have to pay $50 a, a year for uh, individual account or $80 a year for um, family accounts if you wanted to play these new um, if you wanted to play uh, the N64 and Sega Genesis titles that were going to be added. After the initial drop, um, what normally would happen is when it was just NES and SNES, Switch would add four new games every uh, month. It might be one for Nintendo, three for Super Nintendo, two and two, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, there were no new games in November after the um, after the N64 and Sega Genesis library was added. There were no new games added in November, and they added one game in December. So basically, sounds like Switch is just half-assing this online service that they have. Because, yeah, could you imagine the stink uh, Microsoft fans would have if Xbox Games with Gold gave you one new game over the course of two months? It would not. It would. It would be very uh, unbeneficial for the recipient of that uh, offer. <laughs> it would be very uh, uh, sluggish and very uh, ruined. <laughs> Games with games with gold would be looked at like the original Xbox One. Yeah. <laughs> when they wanted to include DR, DRM on all games and and stuff. And and the tent so, like, is, is 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 bad at uh, claiming everything online, the copyright stuff like that. This is a double whammy for them right there to fuck up excuse my language to mess up their. Uh, their innuendos what they do with their Nintendo because th that Nintendo Switch system is like by far a good system by the looks of things and now they messed it up with all these retro weird stuff I mean like I can get a I got how many Nintendo games and did I, I don't have much crap load but I can say I can play it all day with Mario Super Mario World or Mario Brothers 3 so that we get back together 
back on the Daily Motion five years ago. So it's, right. kind, of, so it's kind of weird though because uh, I don't know what they're doing to Nintendo because they're not they're not make me want to buy a Nintendo Switch anytime soon. Right. Um, we, yeah. I'll, go on. I'll 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 do my thoughts when you do, when you're done. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say that you know it's just I would rather wait a few more months to see what they're gonna do with this this online services. And if they can keep making it worse and worse for, for, for me to buy the Nintendo Switch, I mean, with that aspect alone, I think I'll wait until there's a nice, decent sale to buy the Switch, which will be like, instead of it being $400 uh, for a week on its store release, on its original release, you know, I want to spend like maybe $150, $200 at the most to buy the Switch now. Or the Switch Lite for 225 at best. So... Yeah, my thoughts are, you know, uh, Switch had this online service, and, you know, I was really interested when they said they were going to be bringing N64 games that you could play online as long as you were paying for their service. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, even with the individual account, it's still cheaper than what you pay a year for Xbox. But, But at the same time, you know... You know, we made we made fun of previous releases before, like Jelly Boy. <laughs> I said there were no people. There were I don't know one person that was clamoring to play Jelly Boy. This is a escalated thing right there. <laughs> where, Super Nintendo, um, where it was added to Super Nintendo's uh, catalog, but you know, at least it was something. You know, obviously, there's a, they can only add certain games, but you know, come on. Mario, Zelda, Kirby, Mega Man, uh, Metroid, Metroid. Uh, you know, you get all these all these properties. Star Fox. Where you know we're talking about four games a month, and now you got what four different systems to choose from: Nintendo sixty four, Sega Genesis, uh, Super Nintendo, and regular Nintendo. Don't tell me that. And, but they only gave you this one new game over the course of two months when they should have given you eight games. And Paper Mario is great, but they they didn't even add the predecessor to Paper Mario, which is Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. That's what the that's what the uh, Super Nintendo system when I played it at my yeah. camera camp back in the, the, the good old days of gaming. But that was the first. Uh, but the style that Paper Mario is. That's that was started in Super Mario RPG, and they didn't even add that. So it's kind of like, what are they doing? You know, uh, it's they're basically uh, just taking uh, this online system for granted. It's almost like it's almost like uh, Nintendo is saying the Switch Online service. It's not bringing in the money we hope. So whatever, we'll just do whatever with it. And, um, you know, all that interest I had and all that praise I could have given to Nintendo for the, for bringing N64 and Sega Genesis games, you just you just lost all that praise I, I could have given you. Because you're basically screwing over the customer. Why should they continue to pay a monthly fee or an annual fee if this is what you're giving them? Yeah, but I'm gonna pirate most of these games. And, and to be honest with you, I mean, I, what I have in my possession, I mean, I'm surprised Nintendo King didn't come after me yet, you know? Because <laughs> I got friends from high school that gave me all this good stuff. Let's well, just even at that. And it's like, all these good goodies, you know, are interesting to play any given time if I had the proper uh, calibrations to the program. So I have to. Had to initiate this this program, initiate that program. Yes, it's tedious, privacy, whatever. But yo, know, Nintendo can like yo know, fucking suck suck on a lollipop for like here after a while because now it's like I thought Xbox is worse, but Nintendo's getting worse than Xbox now. So no, I'm not going to go to Nintendo anytime soon. That's for certain. PS Five is still on my, on my watch list. So if if us gamers, if we actually still have COVID nineteen still going on. For another six months to eight months, and this stimulus check is going to come next year, early next year, from what I heard from news sources. Then why not buy a PS5 with that money? Not all of it, but yeah. I'll use some of it for PS5. It's sure to be a big sale 
for the summertime. So imagine if we get it by April or May of the stimulus check and then by this June or July, perfect summer sale going on for Nintendo. Switch on, switch for the original switch for about 200 bucks. Switch Lite, 225 bucks. You know, that's like $25 difference. Which one should I choose? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. But that one's like, you know, nah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so Nintendo. Um, and the thing is, you know, even, uh, I want to I say uh, they could have even gotten uh, more titles, like one of the best games of Super Nintendo, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. That's a good one. Um, they could have probably even added that. Uh, RGT85 brought this up. I'll read away his point. Because uh, uh, Arcade 1-Up made their own Ninja Turtles machine. If Arcade 1-Up can get the license to build its own Ninja Turtles machine, you're telling me Nintendo couldn't get the license to resell one of their older and almost best games? So, you know, uh, but hey, if you want to chase off consumers, that's your thing. Um, yeah, I mean, Nintendo's been around for hun- over 150 years, ever since, <laughs> especially since the Civil War. So it, 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 they're digging themselves a, a nice, decent grave if they keep this up. So, you know, Air Aqua would de- you know, will definitely feel like he's getting a heart attack. So the day that Air Aqua dies, the day Nintendo's going to die because Reggie will die eventually, but he's he's a cool cat. You know, I, I, I give respects for being running for Nintendo for a while, the, the America, North American version, that is. But Air Aqua, you know, he did a lot for Nintendo and stuff. And it's like all that for the last 30 to 40 years of his time with Nintendo, as we speak, he's still alive today. Uh, I'm not sure what he's doing with Nintendo right now, but he must be doing some relationships with Nintendo now. But he, he, he sacrificed his family. One time, uh, in, the book, in the book, Game Over with David Chef, if I pronounce his last name, the book Game Over, uh, with Super Mario Brothers, uh, Super Mario on the front cover of the book. Uh, in the book, Air Aqua did so much for Nintendo that he forgot what his children and his wife looked like at the airport when he arrived to visit his family. That's how fucked up Nintendo did with that Iraqua guy. Sorry if I sorry if I like put a foul language in it, but that's what it looks like. And he's gonna look he's gonna be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? What are you doing? Cause he's he spent yeah. his life's work, his life on improving Nintendo over the last 40, 35 years. Since the nineteen seventies, about the nineteen um, early nineteen eighties. It has it not been for him? There would not be no Nintendo America. There would not be no uh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo gaming console and stuff like that. He was the pioneer, or one of the pioneers, or the beginners of Nintendo's gaming life, or gaming aspect of, of the company. So. Yeah. But, hey, you know, when it's the new people running the business, if they don't have the same love that the old person had, the business isn't going to run the way it used to. Yeah, 20 years ago, and I, I think we talked about this back last year, when, when we were reminiscing about games and all. I mean, 20 years ago, it was like a different era back then. Different perspective of freedoms. Different perspective about life and liberty and stuff. And yes, Nintendo still had their uh, their copyright bullshit going on. But it, it, wasn't, it was a totally different time. Like, games were made with passion. If you bought the game, you bought the game, and that's it. You don't buy a subscription service for it. You don't buy. It. Only time you do that is with World of Warcraft back in the 2000s, and that's about it, really. Last time I checked. Other than that, other PC games, other Xbox. Well, back then it was it was starting from Xbox in the early 2000s, but beforehand uh, it was PlayStation, Nintendo 64. They were in competition. They get all these good games coming out. Now, 20 years later. For the last five years, it's like they just half-assed it, like you said. They just messed it up, especially Nintendo and sometimes Xbox. But Xbox is still improving. Sony is up up there in the top tier of the competition because currently they have 150 million people playing players or gamers that have art accounts of each of those people. So that's good. Xbox has about 50 million less than my check, and Nintendo has about maybe. Since it started out the online service, and literally, officially, 
for about maybe five million at best. So, so. Yeah, the only problem with Nintendo is their online service or back thereof. It seemed to be uh, it's 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 almost like uh, they want to hit the reset button with every new console. Like when we had uh, Xbox 360 and we both got our Xbox Ones, we were able to pick up our account on Xbox One. Uh, you know, we just had to sign in, and you know, we could pick up where we left off on our new system. But when you went like from the Wii to the Wii U, you couldn't all those games you purchased on Virtual Console you couldn't take with you. Yeah. The only way you could access those games is if you still had your Wii hooked up, and it still worked. Mm-hmm. Um, when you went from the Wii U to the Switch, if you bought any games off the Wii U, uh, Virtual Console. Um, they didn't come with you to the Switch, you know, and it's just like, you know, if I, if I get Borderlands off game off um, games with gold, I can't, um, you know, it, you know, on Xbox 360. When I went to Xbox One, Borderlands was already there. And the game of the year this year was on sale now. Last time I checked, on Xbox Store was like ten dollars, you know, so. But I'm saying, you know, my my games came with me. Uh, there were maybe a couple games that couldn't uh, um, come with me because they weren't set up to play on Xbox One, which is fine. Um, but you know, at, at least at least the majority of my games came with me. The AAA titles. Mm-hmm. Um, but Nintendo just doesn't really seem to care about that. Nintendo just says new new console. We want your money again. Yep. The old the old guys are definitely out out of the, the loop. Like the because they had to teach the younger guys, uh, us young guys at least uh, of our generation, to keep up with the with these services and, and these uh, practices and uh, and passion. And I'm sure you can't you can't pass down good personality. You can't pass down certain attitudes. But you got to encourage the generation to do something with them because me, you and I, we're in our mid thirties so far, and. I'm starting to see that we as uh, gamers, we're not we're being li- we're not we have nonchalantly but just been cast aside. Like, okay, you're 35 years old, guys. Try to move in, move out. You know, get yourself a wife, get yourself some you know cars and girls and stuff like that. Yes, at the same time, look, it is what it is, guys. You know what? It's all about passion. If you don't have passion for your business. It, the business is not going to thrive, or it's not going to grow, or it's not going to sustain any longer. So, if you don't have that, then why are you in business? If you're not right. going to have what 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 fans ask for, and even if we never on the internet, I was never on the internet until I was. I'm not talking about like literally. No, I was never on the internet, but when I had my home internet service and back in 2004, give or take, when I, for my first year, I just when I started to complain, not complaining, but giving my Reviews and suggestions to Nintendo and IGN and stuff like that. IGN had a, a website at the time where you could do reviews of each game. So that was cool right there. You know, and they still do it to this day, but it was more detailed than ever back then. But what I'm trying to, my point is that back with the internet and all, you know, I didn't have that say on, just what that say on the internet, the, the voice on the internet. Now I do, and I'm starting to see that, you know, it doesn't matter what I say anymore because the, the newer people are now. Look, the, look, are putting themselves saying like, "Oh, I'm Anita Sarkeesian, and you are patriarchal, you are apolitical, you are, oh, 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 masculine and stuff like that. We're gonna make you feel gay. We're gonna make you feel this. We're gonna make you feel that. And I don't mind. I'm not against the gays. I'm not against the LGBT, whatever. But Anita Sarkeesian, not everyone is a damsel in distress like you. Not everyone's a girl. For fuck's sake, I mean." This is what guys do. We can play games, we drink beer, and watch sports once in the blue moon. Especially, well, we'll watch wrestling every week. But that sports, I don't know what's going on with that. You know, Kaepernick and all that stuff with Donald Trump, I don't know. But leave that alone. Let's stick with games. I just said I made a mistake 10 years ago to put games with politics, you know. That's my little shtick. I made it. It's an experiment. But now it's like, you know, what's going on? We're losing our, our roots, so, yeah. Well, like I said, I've, I've said this before. Um, I'll say it again. Um, I don't think I've said it before on stream, though. If I leave um, 
We've talked about the Skyrim granny. Uh, the yes, <laughs> that's a good one. Who loves to play Skyrim? If I live to be ninety, I'd probably still be playing video games. That's just that's just me. I might have to yeah. hire. I might have to hire a helper, a player <laughs> exclusively to play my shit because because I, he has to be eighteen and over, has some sort of income. To, to, to sit, I'll set up an income for him to come in and we do live streams, stuff like that. And I tell him what to do in the old games, like, oh, do this with Time Crisis in that game. Do that with uh, Crash Bandicoot in this game. And I mean old games. It's going to be like Crash Bandicoot 3, Time Crisis 3, fucking uh, Odds World, uh, Odyssey World, whatever the fuck it's called. I will play that game too. My hands are right now are hurting like hell now. So by the time I reach 50, I'm not going to be able to play anything almost. I mean, I'll still write whatever, but like, I wouldn't be playing hours upon hours. Because I know for a fact that I have to get a nerve damage from my right hand from using the, the mouse and keyboard. So the wireless, I got wireless mouse and keyboard for the past few months, if I have a couple of years now. So, you know, it's, you know, it's going to be interesting times in the next 30 years, you know, to see all this good progression of games and stuff like that. Hopefully the next generation of people will definitely have that passion like we did back in 2000s and earlier. You know, re re uproot people. Reinvigorate the crowd of gamers, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, as lo like I said, if, uh, if I live to be 90 and I'm still able to play video games at the point, I'll probably still be playing them. Um... Anything else you want to talk about before we put we, before we uh, end this podcast? Well, I want to say that guys that uh, you know from earlier, I did a good. I, I read the, the preview of the Game Before magazine for this month, December twenty twenty one, and I have to say, guys, if you want to get a copy of this at GameStop, go right ahead. It's just sell it still because this is going to be worth something in the future. These these magazines. Now, not every magazine is going to be super famous, unlike comic books with the Superman first issue, what that was cost like hundreds of thousands of dollars or some shit like that back in 2010. I mean, it was still a mint condition since then. And this by far, I will try to do my best to get those magazine sleeves and get this while you still can because this is going to be iconic for us gamers, both old and new gamers. So, that's all I want to say. Okay. Well, our next podcast is go. Our next stream will be uh, on December eighteenth, a week away from Christmas Day, um, at nine p.m. Eastern. If if uh, nature is willing to let the podcast go uh, start without any hiccups, like tonight. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, you'll join us on Twitch. My Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash rapper jjj. Hope you follow me there. I'm try to do streams um, I try to do streams every night I've been able to the last couple of nights um, I'll try to get back on uh, on schedule Sunday with uh, after I update prices tomorrow also in, if you're on Twitch in the about section is my bit shoot uh, channel where I do let's plays and my price charting store where I sell video games and hopefully we'll see you two weeks from tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. Till then, good night, everyone. Goodbye, people.